All right, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Duty's Daggers, and we have a review today of the Civivi Vision FG. So first, let us. Uh, I'm going to give you some specs of the knife. Um, go over the materials, how it's built, and then um, size comparisons, uh, measurements, and then I'll talk to you about uh, what I think of the knife. So. This is a uh, basically a budget version of a Wii uh, knife. It's basically the same knife. It's the same dimensions, same design. Everything's the same except for the clip, uh, the blade steel, and the Wii version has titanium scales instead of uh, G10 here. Uh, those are the, the main differences. Uh, so this is uh, a cheaper alternative. We're looking at G10 handle scales. Stainless steel uh, liners, uh, Nitro V blade steel, and a deep carry pocket clip. Not this one, uh, but a deep carry pocket clip. Uh, this is one that I put on um, aftermarket, and uh, we'll go over that in a minute. Uh, so those are the materials. Size comparisons. Let's throw up a few knives here. There's the Kaiser Tauser S. How about the Vasti Nightshade? How about Spyderco Native 5? How about Spyderco PM2? And Civivi Elementum. And one more. Let's do. Let's do the QSP Penguin. So there you go. It's not a small knife. Not a large knife either. Kind of right in the middle. Measurements. Let us get out the old ruler here. I feel like I haven't done a, a legit review in a while. I'm a little out of, uh, out of the routine. Handle is 4 and 3 eighths inch. Blade, 3 and a half inches long. Overall, we're looking at eh, about seven and seven eighths of an inch, almost eight inches uh, overall. Now, let's get the calipers out. Let's see what we're dealing with as far as uh, thickness behind the edge and blade stock. Blade stock, 0.11. And behind the edge, we are looking at Let's see, back here we're looking at 17 thousandths toward the middle, about the same, 17 thousandths. And 17, 18, very close to 17, very close to 17 thousandths all the way, uh, which is not bad. Um, I consider 20 thousandths to be kind of on the thicker side of, of okay, good for uh, uh, an EDC pocket knife like this. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, 10, 11, 12 thousandths is, uh, is ideal and nice and thin. So, um, this is under the 20 thousandths kind of, uh, I don't know, self-imposed limit that I put on, uh, how I like my knives to be behind the edge. So that's fine. Uh, now I have done two cut test videos with this knife. So you can go and watch those if you like. I have a full playlist with all my cut testing videos. You can go in there, or you can just type in Duty's Daggers Civivi Vision Cut Test. Uh, if I remember, I'll try to link them right up in the corner here, but I, sometimes I forget. So the first time I did the test, I uh, tested it using just the factory edge that it came with from Civivi. And it did not do very well. Um, we cut some cardboard. We cut a little bit of leather, and then we went to go cut some paper again, and it was not cutting the paper anymore. Um, if you don't, are, are uh, unfamiliar with my cut testing, um, it's not super scientific. What we do is we um, cut some paper before we start cutting, before we start the testing. Uh, it glides through the paper real nice and easy, and then we do a bunch of cutting on different materials, and then we go to cut paper afterwards and see what the difference is. If it can still cut through the paper easily, or if it's has dulled a little bit or a lot or whatever. Uh, this knife, uh, very early on in the testing, was not cutting paper anymore. So I thought maybe 
maybe it was a burnt edge from factory. What that means is, um, you know, with these large production knife companies, they're putting their edge bevels on, they're sharpening their knives with a belt sander. And what happens is sometimes as you're holding the knife blade up to that belt sander, um, it gets hot. And if it reaches a certain temperature, that heat can actually destroy the edge, the, um, the heat treatment protocol that, has, uh, that the blade has gone through to harden it. Once it reaches that, uh, that temperature or higher, it, uh, it starts softening. So you don't want that. You want to keep it below a certain temperature so that the hardness stays in the blade. Um, so sometimes the friction of the belt causes a softer edge. Um, sometimes if you sharpen that material away, uh, you can get down to some nice good hard steel underneath that. Um, and then it's fine. So I thought maybe that was what was going on. So I put a nice fresh edge on this with my work sharp precision adjust, a very sharp edge. And then I did another cut test video. Um, it did a little bit better, but not a whole lot. Uh, it The edge lasted a bit longer uh, than before, but the edge retention here was really not very good um at all it took a very nice keen very very sticky sharp edge hair whittling sharp um, but it just did not hold that for very long now i haven't tested a whole lot of uh, nitro v so i don't know if that is just how nitro v is or if this is a little bit softer maybe than it should be i don't know um all i know is that it did not hold an edge for very long so there's that. Uh, also, I noticed after my cut testing, there was a lot of scratches on the blade. Uh, and I don't cut anything too crazy. I cut cardboard. I cut leather. I cut rope. Um, some bungee cord material. Like uh, some ratchet straps. And um, sometimes some Cecil rope. And that's it. Nothing that should be scratching a blade. But if you look at this... I'll try to get it in the right lighting. Let's see here. It's only visible in certain light, so that's good. It's not super visible all the time. I'm trying to see if I can... I'm not sure if it's showing up or not. Um, but if you look at a certain light, this thing is covered in scratches. Covered. Um, not the end of the world. I have I have noticed that happens with um, blades with blade steels like 14C, 28N, and um, and Nitro V. Actually, those are the only two I've ever noticed it happen with. And I don't know what that is. It's uh, if it's the blade is just soft and it's just scratching easy. I really don't know what's causing that. But regardless, it's a thing. Um, I'm seeing it right now really easily with my naked eye. I'm not sure if it's coming up on the camera or not. Uh, so, that's, the, <laughs> that's not ideal, right? You don't want your blade to be getting scratched that easily. Uh, now, a lot of people are really stoked on this knife, and, um, I am not. I thought I would like it a lot more, um, than I do, and I just really don't like it that much, uh, unfortunately. I wanted to, um, but let's go over the knife here and then we'll talk more about that. So we have, um, this one came in Jade G10, which I uh, dyed to be uh, eggplant purple was the name of the color. Um, there was a few versions of this you could get on my card with a black wash blade or uh, whatever. I got the only satin blade option for, uh, for the satin blades was a Jade uh, handle scale. So I went with that and dyed it. Looks pretty nice. Uh, the pocket clip it came with was really uncomfortable in hand uh, because you can see the pocket clip's kind of up here toward the back of the knife, and this top edge on the pocket clip was, was sharp and, and digging into my hand. So this is actually a Kaiser deep carry pocket clip that I installed. It fits, and you can see this edge here is rounded off, which is much more comfortable in hand now. Um, really didn't even feel the pocket clip hardly at all in the cut testing with this pocket clip on. So that's another negative is the pocket clip it comes with, not good, uncomfortable. 
but you can replace it with one of these. These are 15 bucks. You can get them on the CVV website. Um, the locking mechanism here is the SNEX locking mechanism, the, the SNEX lock. Uh, what do they call it? Is it just called the SNEX lock? I don't know. Designed by SNEX. He's a knife designer. He has a custom version of this knife. Um, and it's basically a shark lock. You, uh, you pull down on this tab right here, um, and well, there's a there's a spring right down here. That's uh, that's pushing this tab up into a little slot in the tang of the blade, that uh, that locks it in position. Yeah, and the only way to close it is to pull that tab out of there, and so that the blade can freely swing shut. Now the reason this pops out is because I removed the pin that will, that goes right in here. So when you buy it from CBV. It's going to have this pin right in here, which prevents it from being able to pop out like this. Um, I kind of like it to be able to pop out because it's, it's kind of fidgety. It's kind of fun to like pop it out and just and slide it back in. I don't know, but it, you don't have to have it do that. Um, it's a little easier to operate with the pin inside because it, it just it doesn't pop out. It's easy for me to do it to operate the knife with it staying in, um, but so you can do it either way you want. You can leave that in. You can take it out, whatever you want to do. Um, I like the locking mechanism. Uh, mine had real bad lock stick when I first bought the knife. And um, I have real calloused fingers, but it was making my finger hurt. It was really, really lock sticked. Um, and I was using it a lot. I was flipping it a lot to try to get rid of it. So my finger was sore as hell after a while. And still kind of, it's not the most comfortable thing to pull down on, I got to say. The shark lock is easier. Um, it seems to be a bit wider and the jimping is finer on the shark lock so you don't have to really grab it as hard it kind of just sticks to your finger better um, in fact it's not a, it's not a lot wider the shark lock but it is a little bit wider a little bit better of a landing area uh, for your finger on the shark lock um, nevertheless I think it's cool I like you know, it's a very uh, kind of intuitive locking mechanism. You just stick your finger up here, pull down, and, and shut the blade. It's nice. You know, your fingers are never in the way of the cutting path of the of the blade. It's nice. I like it. Um, the detent is not there because it's just not one of those knives that has a detent ball um, like you'd see on a liner or a frame lock or compression lock. You don't have that nice click um, shut. It just it doesn't have a detent ball, so it's not doing that. Um, so you're not going to have a real crisp breakaway. Um, very easy to fail, but also pretty easy to flip out too. Just give it a little bit of uh, oomph, and it's going to flip out. Uh, I think a little bit easier to flip out than with the shark lock. Um, you know, same thing with the shark lock on the 8020.5s. It's just easy to fail it, too. Um, that's just the nature of the locking mechanism. Um, but for deploying, I think it actually is a little bit snappier than the 8020.5s. Um, reverse flicking, you can do it. Um, yeah, you can do it. You can do it for pretty much pretty easily. Um, we have a pretty good choke up spot, pretty nice and comfy there. Uh, there's this little hump right there, which isn't the most comfortable, but you're kind of almost above that anyways. So it doesn't really bother me. Um, I like to be able to choke up on my knives, so this feels really nice choked up. Um, this knife does really well with like, uh, kind of food prep almost style chopping down on a surface kind of cutting because you can see the handle in relation to the blade, um, the blade kind of slopes upward a little bit in comparison to the handle. Um, that means you can get almost the full, almost the full uh, surface of the edge down on the surface before your knuckles uh, hit. Um, that just makes these kinds of like chopping, sort of cutting motions uh, a lot easier and better. You know, uh, if you look at that compared to like a a worn clip or something, pretty much only the tip is ever in contact with the surface. See what I mean? Uh, but with this, you can kind of rock and get all that nice belly 
um, touching the surface. So that's uh, that's good for like food prep style stuff and um, you know utility cut. This is great with utility cuts too, as you can see in the, the cut test video. Uh, so that's the basic uh, construction and operation of the knife. Full liners, we got these holes in here for looks and a little bit of weight relief. Um, not exactly sure what this hole is for. Uh, you can kind of see the locking mechanism in there, which is kind of cool. Um, you can kind of see where this is uh, coming in contact with the tang up in there. That's the only reason I could think of that they put that there so that uh, you could kind of see what's going on. Let me let, let me let the dog out here. So, um, oh, and reversible pocket clip. Uh, that's nice. Uh, it's recessed. You got a spot there for it. Um, so, people love this knife, and I just am not I'm not really connecting with it. Uh, I think it's a combination of a few things. The the lock stick really sucked, and even though now it, that it's gone, it's still not it's still not the most comfortable to disengage, which is fine. That that's kind of low on the list of negative things. I I could get over that if um, the rest of the the rest of the knife was was great, but there's a, a lot of little things here that are adding up. I think um, so. We have that. We have the the very scratched up blade. Um, after the testing, which uh, again only visible in certain lights, but when you catch it, uh, it just kind of sucks to see. And um, I'll put a better picture of it on my Instagram. Um, I'll, I'll, in fact, I'll do that right after I upload this video, so that if you're seeing this and you want to go to my Instagram right now and take a look, then you'll be able to. It'll be on there, I promise. Uh, the subpar edge retention uh, is another thing. Um, again, not sure if that's just Nitro V in general or if this is just a little bit softer than usual. Um, I wish they had used even like 14C28N uh, or 154CM, something. Something just a step up from Nitro V would have been great. Um, the fact that you need to change out the pocket clip um, to make it comfortable in hand is a pretty, pretty good, pretty big negative. Even though, you know, 15 bucks, you can change it out to a nice one. But still, I mean, come on. Um, uh, you know, those are the main things. Uh, aside from that, it just doesn't grab me. You know, um, it does not grab me and, like I thought it, w I w it would. Um, I haven't even carry I haven't even felt the need or want to carry this at all since I got it. Uh, you know, I did the cut testing with it, but I re I have not once put this in my pocket to carry it. I just, I don't feel like I want to, you know, for whatever reason. Um, yeah, it's just, maybe it's just not for me, you know. I know a lot of people love it, and if you do, that's completely and totally fine. It's just, I guess it's just not really my vibe, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's just not really my jam, I guess. Uh, so... Uh, oh yeah, we're up perfectly centered too. The lockup's nice and solid. Actually, I have a little bit of blade play right now. Let me see. Should tighten right out. Yeah. Yep, yeah, super solid. Uh, so anyways, that's it. Um, like I said, those things that I mentioned, I think, are, are, are all kind of adding up to make me dislike the knife. Um, maybe aesthetically, it's not super my thing. I don't know. Just whatever it is, not really my thing. If it's yours, that's great. If you're okay with the issues that I mentioned. And that's about it. Love you guys. Please like the video before you head out. I'd appreciate it very much. It helps me out. Um, and, uh, yeah, I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Adios.